And welcome back once again to Ford Sports Money as we welcome Scott Meliason, the head of the J.P. Morgan Private Banking Sports Group. Uh, he's here to discuss the newest trend in team ownership. And I think we think of the old school owners in sports, Scott, the, the guy that had a big car dealership, good old boy, buys one, or a guy that made his money in widgets buying a team. What is the new trend? These are very sophisticated businesses, and what we've seen is people that are coming in and buying the franchises are entrepreneurs that have had successes in other industries, and they're taking their the framework, the way they think about business, and applying it to sports teams and, and maybe having a different result. I've seen a big push in tech ownership, it seems, or at least tech involvement and in upper management. I'm thinking of a team like, for instance, the San Francisco 49ers with their new stadium. Is this something that you think is going to work out well for that team and perhaps be a trend in football and the other sports as well? Yeah, when we think about ownership and management of professional sports teams, you really look at where is the wealth creation coming from in this country. So technology is certainly one area, um, uh, potentially real estate, Wall Street executives, et cetera. But specifically with respect to technology, a lot of people are really excited when you have someone like Gideon Yu, who's now the president of the 49ers, who comes in. He's got all this experience with Facebook and Yahoo, and he's going to think about how do we deliver our content to the end user in the most efficient way. So some really exciting developments. I kind of joked at the top about the old school of owner that maybe they just got into it at that point for the love of the game. They had a lot of money. Is that still the case with some of these guys or do they really look at it as, you know what, I know it's a sports team, but it's a really good business for me. Yeah, when I think about a guy like Jim Haslam who bought the Cleveland Browns this year, he's a guy who's very passionate about football, uh, deep ties to the University of Tennessee and its football program. But he's also a very sophisticated business person and successful entrepreneur. And I think he's using both his passion his passion for sports, his passion for football, and his business acumen uh, to make an investment that he believes will be sustainable for, for generations. I look at some of the other new owners, uh, like the Golden State Warriors with Lacob and Goober, yes. and also Josh Harris with the 76ers. A lot of guys seem to be in private equity, former Wall Street guys. Are these guys that somehow are being able to do things that prior ownership, for one reason or another, just wasn't able to get done? I think the, the answer is absolutely yes. These are people that are used to buying brands, terrific brands that maybe are underperforming, and they in, inject a professional management team. And so for Josh and his ownership group, I think they got in at the right price point. They're going to ride the wave of media values that's uh, increasing in the NBA. And for him, if he can uh, boost the revenues by bringing in professional management uh, and keep uh, some, some discipline around expenses, yeah, he's going to achieve great returns. Yeah, and I was thinking also with Golden State, I mean, the previous ownership was trying for years to get a new arena there. That was mm -hmm. one of their biggest problems. They were playing in an antiquated facility. They didn't have the suite revenue, certainly no t new technology in the building. And now you're looking at Lacob and Goober building a new arena in San Francisco on the waterfront. I mean, $500 million for the building, perhaps another $500 million in development around it. I mean, that could greatly boost the value of that team, I would think. Yeah, and I think sometimes it's a change of ownership can change the dynamic with the with the public. If you're trying to get some concessions from the county or the cities, the change of ownership can be very positive. In that particular example, you've got you know some guys that are very experienced in the private equity world as you manage with Kleiner Perkins, and they can use that business acumen to come in and, and, and try and drive change. Scott, I know you deal primarily on the finance side for these deals. What about the fact that we've just gone through a, you know, a very severe recession I mean, we're not exactly going through boom times right now, but things seem to have stabilized. Are any of these new owners guys that have kind of, with their private businesses, survived or even increased their wealth, and now they're taking a step back, looking at the economy, saying, you know what, now maybe is a good time to go in and, and buy a sports team? I think there are two great recent examples of that, and they're both in the NFL. So if I think about Shad Khan, who I know you've had on the show, um, and his auto parts business uh, called Flexingate. Through 2008, you know, there are many auto companies in Detroit that struggled. Mm -hmm. He had a very successful business, and he was actually able to grow and gain market share and do certain acquisitions. I would say Jim Haslam with Pilot Flying J, he actually engineered the acquisition of Flying J during the financial crisis. And again, this was an opportunity that was created out of the recession, uh, and now he's got a company that's stronger for it. These guys are all good businessmen, but they're different kinds of business. We've talked about the tech industry, private equity, uh, Shad Khan with the, the auto parts business. Will we see them run their businesses differently, like try to grow it differently, for example? I think historically, and this goes back a number of years, but sports was always about ticket sales. How many people can I get through the turnstile? 
charge for parking, charge for concessions, et cetera. The business model has really changed. The primarily media businesses at this point, if you look at the percentage of revenue that comes, uh, you know, in the income statement for any sports team, uh, the, the media component is huge. Um, and second to that, particularly in, in football and baseball, the arena economics, the stadium economics are just enormous. You want to you attract, you know, the best companies uh, in your city that will come through. Uh, they're going to pay top dollar for both the club seats and the suites. And the extra margin that you get out of servicing your corporate base mm -hmm. is actually many times the driver of profitability. When you look at the way these guys are running teams, is it a case where they have to still think in the back of their mind, I need good sort of old school people, GMs, mm -hmm. talent evaluators, that sort of thing? Or are they pretty confident that whoever they bring in, even if it's from their side of the fence, so to speak, that they can handle that sort of thing? I think you've I think you've seen different owners take different approaches. Some people will bring in. So I think about the, the Tampa Bay Rays. Um, the management team there actually had experience on Wall Street, and they brought in. They just they brought a certain mindset. Again, that a different framework from a different industry, and they've been very successful um, in terms of you know turning that franchise around. There are other franchises where people are um, more traditional. So the, go back to the Cleveland Browns. They've hired Joe Banner from the Eagles. Here's a guy who's got decades of experience in the NFL, and Jim Haslam just felt like it was really important to have someone who's been in the industry as a, a close part of his management team.